rappers of this country, even though they were imperfect men, had, they had a vision for equality and fairness and justice. They tried to write that into the laws, into the constitution that we hear every single day. These men wrote these words to talk about the future that was going to be. The future that was going to be a more perfect union than the one that they had because, frankly, they were slave-owning men. And yet they had an idea of what the life should be about in the future. History has always been about improving the future. History has been about making sure that justice prevails, not necessarily for me, for my generation, but I'm going to do everything I can in my generation so that the future is better. That's what the women of this Commonwealth have done for 200 years, 300 years, fighting to struggle for their rights. As of today, we have those rights. The Constitution promised it, we now have it. And yet, the men and women in that chamber today, the majority party of this Commonwealth today, decided that that's not good enough for them. They would rather see the days before those rights were given, when there were lesser rights, when the rights were only in paper but not in reality. That all the women in this room right now, all, the, all of you gathered here today, that you can only enjoy those rights by reading about it, not by exercising it. <coughs> My friends, we are a few. There are only 32 of us Democrats in the House. We are a diverse party. We come from all parts of the Commonwealth. We come from all backgrounds. People like me don't even come from Virginia. We were born overseas. But we come together with one view, one view that unifies all of us. And that view is that we believe in the Constitution. We believe not only what the words say, but indeed that we will actually carry out those rights in the Constitution. And we believe that those rights are for every single person, no matter your gender, no matter your race, no matter your religion, no matter your national origin, no matter what you're creating. We believe these rights exist for you. And we're going to do everything we can to stand up and fight for those rights. Now, my colleagues have talked about our strategy here for the next few days. Frankly, I don't know what's going to happen over the next few days. We are outnumbered. I stand here not only as a minority, not only a minority in that I'm by uh, race a minority, by political party I'm a minority, by geography I'm a minority, but I'm also a minority in that I'm a male. Commonwealth of Virginia has a majority of women that runs this place. Majority of women are across the country. If we don't succeed over the next few days in those halls by using our democratic ways to make the bills better, if we don't win that, and if the governor of the state decides to sign this bill into law, guess what? We have part two. Part two is another promise of the democracy that says campaigns and elections are how we decide our, our future leaders. And guess what, folks? We are a majority female state. When women vote, women win. When women vote, we win. So I urge every single one of you to be diligent, work with us, do everything you can to make sure that the laws that come out of that chamber are going to be good for you, that protect your rights. But, but, if in the un uncertain event that it doesn't happen that way, I urge all of you to work your hearts out over the next eight months. Promise us that we're going to do everything we can to make sure that the federal government stays in democratic hands because that's the only check and balance we have to some of these states. And next year after that, promise us women will vote so that women can win. Yeah. Thank you.